Hello everyone and welcome to the Q&A that I announced about three weeks ago to celebrate 7,000 subscri- Really? Okay. The Q&A video that will be releasing because I now am at 10,000 subscribers and still cannot find an appropriate way to, uh, I don't know, to comprehend what just- to process what just happened. What I'm basically saying is, is that I'm still speechless to this day about the fact that like, this channel has grown in the amount of time that it has to the size that it has grown to. And again, it's all thanks to all of you, so a huge thank you for that. So this is actually my Q&A that was announced when I reached 7,000 subscribers. So I was, I said, hey, ask anything, ask as many questions as you like, as long as it's not too personal, I will answer it. So with that said, let's begin with, uh, I'm just going to go through like the most recent, like try to find the first one and then just work my way to the end. The Angry Terrarian asks, what's your Roblox password? Um, no. Spiral Sonic King 2018 asks, oh, first he says, congrats, congrats, Nux, these videos are really great. <laughs> Road to 7k if you were, and again, thank you very much. Uh, his question is, if you were able to make a game, what would, what would it be and what would it be about? You don't have to answer this the second part if you don't want to um i don't know i'd make like an adventure game that's similar to like zelda 2 i don't know why but i always feel like s that game or i mean i guess it does kind of exist if you play um monster world 4 if you play monster world uh dragon's trap or wonder boy dragon's trap excuse me um i don't know i've always had like an idea of a game that i would like to make but unfortunately i'm like every time i come up with an idea it just seems like there's an indie game that comes out that is basically all the ideas that I would want, or most of them, or at least the main idea of what I wanted the game to be about. So when I, I mean, I would like to make a game, but at some point um, I, I need to start writing these ideas down and hopefully I'll have an idea of what I really want to make. But um, so no, I don't really have an idea of what it would be. Um, it'll probably be some kind of adventure game. So yeah, thanks for the question. Sonic Inside Out asks, What are your opinions on indie platforms such as Freedom Planet, A Hat in Time, and Shantae series? Um, a Hat in Time, I can say, is pretty good. I played a few hours in it. I haven't played as much as I would like to, but um, the amount that I played, I've enjoyed it. Um, I've had friends tell me that it's better than Mario Odyssey. And yes, there are reasons that it can be better, but there are reasons that are not as good. So that's for that one. The Shantae series, I'm barely getting into the Shantae series. I'm starting with Risky's Revenge, and I have about an hour and a half in invested in, and so far, I'm enjoying it. The only thing I wish it had was more of a map system, so that way I'm not getting confused on, like, which which area I need to go to through, like, jumping in and out of, uh, of planes or something like that. Like, if you play the game, you know what I'm talking about. So, um, as for the other two games, I'll be getting into those as I... As I beat Risky's Revenge, I'll go into, um, not Half Genie Hero. There's a game that comes before it. But whatever the order is, you know, I'm just going to go from that one to the next one that was released, and then to Half Genie Hero. Um, so that's my thoughts on the Shantae series. The games are fun, the mechanics are fun. Or the game is fun, because I'm only playing Risky's Revenge. The mechanics fun. Uh, I haven't explored everything in the game yet, so I will be getting to that as soon as I can. And as for Freedom Planet, I played a demo on this, and, um, I don't know, it's it's such a weird thing when people say it's the Sonic, it's like a Sonic game, but they kind of made it its own thing, when, if anything, I'd probably say the sprites are a little too big in the first one. Um, will I be getting it in the future? Will I cover it in a video? Yeah, at some point. Maybe a video, maybe a stream, so, um, I don't really have a full opinion on Freedom Planet game. Or, I mean, I should say game, since the second one is coming out, or already is out, or whatever the status of that one is. Um, I've had people recommend it to me, so it is a game I will be looking at at some point. So, there you go. Datbo asks, What do you think of the Sonic Game Gear games? Okay, I've played about three or four of... No, I've played three of them. Uh, Sonic 1 on Game Gear, Sonic 2 on Game Gear, and Sonic Labyrinth on Game Gear. Um, I've heard of Sonic Chaos being pretty good, although a bit easy, and Sonic Drift I haven't heard that many great things about, so, uh, and I think there's even, like, a Game Gear version of Mean Bean Machine, which is pretty bizarre, but okay. Take it wherever you want. Um, Sonic 1 is pretty good. It's a solid game. 
Uh, it's not as great as some of the Genesis games, even Sonic 2, as much as I don't like it. As much as I don't like Sonic 2, I still say it's it's better than Sonic 1 in some ways. Uh, other ways, not so much. But um, it's still a solid game that you should check out. If you have the ability to check it out, I'm pretty sure there's like different ways that you can. There's different... Like, if you have... Uh, the Mega Collection Plus on PS2, that's a per that's the perfect way to go into it. Sonic 2, on the other hand, eh, not so good. I didn't get very far in the game. That game is ridiculous with its difficulty and, like, the opening area. I'm not a fan. And so Sonic Labyrinth, excuse me, and Sonic Labyrinth sucks. Can't really say much else. It just sucks. I want to play the rest of them. I want to play as many Sonic games as I can on this channel, so... Maybe I'll have an opinion on the rest of them, but for now, those I only have three that I can really talk about. But thank you for your question. Freddy the Gamer asks, Do you like Metal Gear games? Just wondering. Uh, not really. I've only played a demo of... I played the original Metal Gear, and I've played... Or I've played a little bit of it, and I've played a little bit of a demo for Metal Gear Solid 3D Snake Eater. It's basically the 3DS version of Metal, Sol uh, Metal Gear Solid... Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. I don't know why English is so difficult for me these days. But, um... I'm not really into stealth games, but I will give these games another shot whenever I can, so, um... That's gonna be a thing. I did play... Oh, I also played, um... Uh... Ground Zeroes. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, and I just really didn't understand it. I didn't... I was... Again, I don't like stealth games. So... There will be a day in the future where I might play him again and might have a different opinion on him, but as of right now, I'm not too much, I'm not a fan. Matthew Z.E. Cow, Plush Edition, Z.E. Cow Cinema, asks a few questions. One, who's your favorite Mario character? That's probably going to be Luigi. It was the high jump, made him, made him a very fun character to play as in uh, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels on Super Nintendo, which is basically just a remake of it, so it was always fun to play as him. And also in Mario 2, so... Good stuff. Two, who is your favorite, second favorite Sonic character? It's a tie between Blaze the Cat and Espio. So if I were to go, I'd probably stick with Espio. Mm, actually, I don't... See, that's a tough one. I can never come up with my second favorite. Because uh, I was like, oh, Blaze is cool for this reason. Espio is cool for this reason. Um, I, I might just stick with Espio. He's a ninja. Three, what's your favorite Sonic game? Sonic Adventure. There you go. Let it let it be known. Let it be recorded. It's on the record. Sonic Adventure is my favorite Sonic game. Four, what's your favorite game overall? And that will be Pokemon Crystal. And I am so glad that thing was released recently on 3DS because now I have two ways of playing it. One that I can play on where anywhere I go on my 3DS, and then I have um, I have the cartridge itself, which I can play if I ever wanted to stream it or anything. I can use that because, you know, I have the cartridge and I have uh well, I mean, I I recently got a Retron 5, so it'll let me stream and record Game Boy and Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games, because it has that port available for it. I know people have their issues with Retrons, but I think, so far, it's been a really good investment. Uh, it has its quirks and everything, but I'm pretty sure any emulation uh, console will have their quirks. Even second, even aftermarket clone consoles have their quirks about them that, you know, things that people are like, oh, why does it do this? It's so dumb, but... That's just how things are. Uh, if I were to get like a Game Boy player and stuff, that'd probably be way too expensive for it. And I would probably have to get my hands on like a Super Game Boy or something. Uh, not Game Super Game Boy. Yeah, Super Game Boy 2 or something for like the Game Boy Color stuff. And even then, that only probably reach Japanese. I'm not entirely sure how all that works. And I've probably just rambled in incoherently to some. But uh, let's just say I can record them and it's going to be awesome. Five. When are you going to do a face reveal? Or have I done one already? Um, I've mentioned my Twitter account, but, um, you know what, I'm gonna be honest, I, I just, I don't like taking selfies whatsoever, so, let's just say, uh, my Twitter account has a picture of me on it, probably from about a year ago, it's not much different between then and now, maybe lack of a beard, but, eh, whatever, I'm just not a very photogenic person these days, but, there you go. Evan Place asks if I've heard about Sega making a Sega Razor console, now, I think I've looked this up before, I'm gonna need a minute. Okay, I found, a, I found a website for it. I guess it's like called Operation Razor. Now, by the looks of it, it just seems like it is... Okay, I'm on the official website. 
The Razer is a video game console designed in concepts from independent developer Ath Alethia Games. The purposes of which is returning Sega to the home hardware market. So basically, it's just a proof of concept that they want to present to Sega. It's like, hey, we have this idea for a game console that can bring you guys back to the video game console market. Uh, my whole idea... I mean, the my thoughts on this are this. Good luck. I don't think Sega's interested in any way, shape, or form of getting back into the console market because I feel like they're comfortable where they are right now just making games and publishing software and stuff. I think... Um, Sega returning to a game uh, to the game console market when you can just publish your games on better um, better places such as like Steam, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. I think it would be a better idea if they just stick to where they are rather than just trying to take another risk like um, making a new console because I, I feel like the console market is definitely um, it's like there's three major developers, and then there's all the small Android-based developers or um, consoles that are out there. So I feel like it would not really benefit Sega to do this. In fact, it might actually hurt them even more, to the point of they might have to sell their assets and stuff if they actually did um, pull the trigger and go for this. So, and and I've seen this before. I've seen there was one about a Dreamcast a while ago. I forgot the name of it. A friend of mine mentioned it to me, and. Um, as much as I say good luck to them, we had a good laugh about this because it was like, they really want Sega to make a new console, but you guys think about this. What if it's on a failing console that not only one, tank, takes down the company with it, but also those games are exclusive to it. Think about Sega exclusive things on a console that not many people might buy. I know Sega has their diehard fans, but would you really buy a Sega console if there is no guarantee of third-party support. Hey, it's like thinking about the Wii U. Sorry, Wii U fans. It's like buying Wii U exclusive games, but you also have to buy the Wii U. But that system was known for its lack of third-party support. I mean, think of all the best games on the Wii U. They were The majority of them were all published by Nintendo. So you had a few here and there, but mostly Nintendo. Would you really want a Sega console that does that, or would you rather have them release their games on different... Uh, platform so that way not only they benefit from the sale of their game to you but it also gives all of you the chance to play it on whatever platform you feel is necessary or whatever platform that you own at the moment I think it's better that Sega stays in just publishing games they don't there's no need for another competitor in the console market and this kind of leads me on to a bit of a tangent about Atari Box, where it's just ridiculous thinking that they're going to come back to uh, this whole thing about um, being in the console market yet again, even though they're kickstarting this whole thing. They're going to crowdfunding for this, and it's just ridiculous. So, again, the whole Sega Razor thing, unfortunately, I do not think this will be a great idea if Sega were to invest in this. However, I've seen this thing, this website, and it looks like it started in 2015. I think Sega's just not listening, which... Um, normally, saying that Sega's not listening is a bad thing, but at this point, it's like, you know what? I think this one, they, they've dodged a bullet. So, uh, no offense to those who are the Razer console uh, team, but this might be one... This is a losing fight for you guys. So, uh, let's, let's just move on. Daniel asks, have you ever played any Square Enix, Square Inc., or games like, or games in Gears games? So, Square Enix, he means like Final Fantasy, Dragon's Quest, stuff like that, and then, um, games in Gears, like A Hat in Time, or do I just play Sega games? Actually, that's the funniest thing. A lot of people think I just play nothing but Sonic or something like that, and some people have asked for variety on the channel. Here's the thing, I don't play very many Sega games. In fact, I, the, my most played system is my Nintendo 3DS. Growing up, I didn't even, I didn't really play too many Sega Genesis games because I had like four or five of them, uh, and only one of them was a Sonic game, and that was the first one. Um, I didn't. I've always mentioned that I didn't know Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic CD existed until I had the internet or until I had like a Mega Collection of some kind. And my second ever Sega game or Sonic game is Sonic Adventure on Dreamcast, which is my favorite Sonic game. So I missed out on a huge library of Genesis games. Um, but to answer your first question, 
Well, well, let me finish by saying that I play a bunch of other games as well. Like, I'm huge into Pokemon, I'm huge into, like, Mario, huge into... Well, not huge into Mario. It's kind of gone downhill as of late for me, but... Odyssey brought it back up a little bit. Uh, huge into The Legend of Zelda. Um, so yeah, I play a bunch of other games. It's just Sega, or Sonic the Hedgehog is just like, as of right now, is the main focus of this channel. So, getting back to your first question, have I played any Square Enix games? Absolutely, I've played a little bit of the first Final Fantasy, I've played the fourth Final Fantasy on two different platforms, on um, Super Nintendo and PC, since I own it on Steam. Um, I have Final Fantasy VII, I played about an hour of it, though I feel like I should restart it just so that way I can get back into it. Uh, Dragon's Quest, I beat the first Dragon's Quest, the mobile version, because the original version, uh, like, no matter what version you play, you're playing, you're doing six hours of grinding just to fight one boss. Maybe two if you actually go and save the princess. Oh, spoiler alert. That's no spoiler. It's not really much to the game except for grind, upgrade, grind, upgrade, grind, upgrade, fight a boss, end. And then if you go for the optional princess thing, fight another boss, take her back home. Or to your place and you'll win and she stays with you. Which is sweet. <laughs> also, there's this really funny thing where you can fight the dragon and still be holding the princess in your arms. It's like, just the idea of that is hilarious. And A Hat in Time, again, I said earlier I played it. I would like to play a lot more of it, so I do get a, I do get to these games. Um, my big thing is the fact that I've never beaten a Final Fantasy game before, despite owning a few copies of, of 1 and 2, owning 4, owning 7, uh, Tactics Advance. I've never beaten one of those games. I, I even own Explorers. Although that's, like, as for classic Final Fantasy, I've never beaten one of those games. The closest I've beaten is... Um, I, I've gotten pretty far in Chrono Trigger on PSP. There's a re-release of the European version or something like that. But also, um, I have beaten Super Mario RPG a few times, and that's probably one of my favorites that Square has developed. So if you haven't played it, it you know, if you own a Wii U, if you own a Nintendo Wii, if you own, I, it might be on 3DS eShop. I doubt that, but if it ever comes back, if it ever comes to the Nintendo Switch, that is a game I highly recommend playing. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's it. You know, I, I do play other games. I don't just sit and play Sonic. In fact, I, I mostly play Sonic nowadays just for videos, unless I'm really wanting to just, you know, I don't know, beat some faster, beat some times that I've, um, that I, like, tried getting. It, it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. Anyways, moving on. RJM Lab. Oh boy, I wonder what he can ask. Are you going to do more Switch content? Are you going to play Dark Souls Remastered? And send nudes. Uh, no to the third one, because that's not a question. Am I going to play Dark Souls Remastered? Mm, I mean, I own the original on Xbox. I don't really see the need in getting a remastered version, so probably not. And am I going to do more Switch content? Um, I mean, if the demand is there. If people are wanting me to cover something on the Switch, um, which I... I mean, I, I can always do something on the Switch. Um, like, when I first got a Switch, somebody asked me if I had Mania on it. It was like, it's ridiculous because I already own it on two systems. One of them I could take with me anywhere that I want. I don't know. If there's something interesting on the, on the Switch that's not available on anything else, of course I would look at it. But also, if specific games are on it, it just depends on what's on. Also, um, I have something at the end of the video that I kind of want to bring up regarding the 10,000 subscribers. So, I, I can't believe I didn't mention it earlier. But, uh... I'll, I'll, I'll mention it when I'm done with the question, so we're going to keep moving on. Uh, Kenhead asked, What is your favorite Sega Genesis game? What is your favorite Sonic OST? And what is your favorite Nintendo game? Okay, so the first one is going to be a bit of a, like, a bit of an odd one. My favorite Sega Genesis game is Monster World 4. If you've never heard of it, look it up. It is, out of all the games, I have to say it's the best one. It's really good. Um, the only thing I would say is the music is a little monotonous since it kind of uses the same med uh, melody. Not not medley. Medley is just like a compilation of other It uses the same melody for each uh, for a lot of its music, which is a shame. But the gameplay is there. And um, while it is a bit tough to get used to at first, you can get into it. And it's really good. And I highly recommend it. And the only downside is the fact that it was never released in the United States. So it is available through the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Three uh, through the Monster World Collection. It's still a, ge a Genesis game. We just never got it here in the U.S. Uh, if you had it in Japan, lucky you. But um, if you have an Xbox One, it is backwards compatible, so it's about $10 for three games. Um, and it, 
I would recommend it just for Monster World 4 alone, because it's such a solid game. Uh, I, a huge shout out to my friend Retropolizone for recommending it. Uh, he, he mentioned it, said how good it was, I gave it a shot when I had, I think it was a week or a month or 14 days or whatever it was of the Xbox Game Pass, and once I beat the game it was like, this is officially my favorite Genesis game, because it's just that good. My favorite Sonic OST would have to be Sonic Adventure. Hands down, no no doubt about it. Absolute favorite. Plus, 90s butt rock is like pretty damn enjoyable, so... <laughs> Even if you cringe at it, you gotta admit it sounds good. And my favorite Nintendo game? Um, does Pokemon Crystal count? Because that's technically published by Game Freak, or de developed by Game Freak, published by Nintendo, their second party developer, or maybe at this point first party developer. Uh, I, would have to, I would have to go with Pokemon Crystal. It is my favorite video game. It's from Nintendo. It's amazing. And um, I, I guess Pokemon Generations is subjective on what's good and what's not. And it has its flaws, but I really enjoy it. So um, there you go. Sin. Oh, dear. Okay. Let's see what he has to ask before I just decide to, I don't know, Alt F4 out of this whole thing. This is for the Q&A. How many subs do you think you will have, and do you think you have the one video that ends up making your channel explode? <laughs> it kinda already did. That is the Uganda Knuckles mod. As of right now, that is the biggest, the most viewed piece of content I have ever created in my many years of being on YouTube. And, I mean, it's the reason I'm at 10,000 subscribers, which is, again, very mind-blowing, but again, you know, I just look at it and it's like, oh, god, a meme just made my channel. Again. The original explosion of my channel was the dab mod from a long time ago, back in October? September? Somewhere around there? I don't know, that one got... It was probably my first video where pe people were coming by, only because it was just a silly piece of content. Or non-content, in a way. Um, but the Uganda Knuckles one was just, like, people found it entertaining, people found the editing to be really good, and people just liked the meat. So, you know what, to each their own, just don't force me to like it. And I, I only say that because having a channel that's mostly focused around Sonic the Hedgehog and the username Knuckles tends to just draw in all of these comments, and it's just one of those things where it just grades on you, so it's no offense to people who do enjoy the meme, it's just that I've heard it so many times that I'm actually tired of it. So, um, I, I've had comments of people telling me to just enjoy it, and it's like, it's a little hard to enjoy what's been kind of, uh, I don't know, beaten to the ground, buried, or whatever it is. It's just been, like, so used around me. I'm tired of it, so no offense to people who do like it, but that's my whole opinion on it. Anyways, that's the one that I would say is, has made my channel explode. Um, I don't know if any future video will cause it, will have an effect like that. We'll just see in the future. Who knows? Oh, and he also asks if we're going to do a collab when his channel grows a bit more. Let's see the results, okay, buddy? <laughs> uh, Shy plays YT asks... Well, first off, he's been here since 300 subs. Yeah, I've been here since 400. <laughs> People just think, like, wait, but you make the channel. I've been here since 400. Anyways, his questions are, do I have a Switch? Yes, I do. In fact, in the description down below, I have a Nintendo Switch code, and I'm going to say what that's going to be for, you know, at the very end of it. His second question is, did you realize you gained 2,000 subs within a week? Yeah, again, you got into Knuckles. People like memes, and that one, honestly, as much as, as I was saying, as much as I don't like the meme anymore. I do love the amount of editing that I put into it, because I just felt really proud of it by the end of it. And his third question is, first Sonic game. Sonic the Hedgehog won on Sega Genesis. It was probably one of five Genesis games we owned. So, good stuff. Marius asks, well, first off, he has a fan game for me, which I will take a look at uh, when I can. Sonic vs. Darkness, the true nightmare revived by Nefold first. Sounds edgy as heck. I might look at it one day. Who knows? Uh, also, what is your favorite genre of video games? Mine are action adventure game, action games, or arcade games like Devil May Cry, Platinum Games, uh, from uh, Platinum Games. Oh no, Devil May Cry, Platinum Games stuff. So probably like Bayonetta and Serious Sam. Um, yeah, 2D platformers are kind of my thing. Um, and it's funny because uh, people ask me, it's like, oh, that's my favorite. Uh, that that's my favorite genre of games. You know, 2D platformers. What's your favorite video game? It's like an RPG. A JRPG is my favorite video game, so... <laughs> it, it's crazy to say that I'm not really a huge fan of JRPGs, yet I own, like, so many of them. It's, it's bizarre. So, I do like 2D platformers, which is why I enjoy the Sonic games more now than I have before, because it's like... 
They're just 2D games that work really well, so there you go. Uh, thank you for the question. Sonic Gamer 321, what's up? Anyways, uh, he asks, what was your favorite game released in 2017 besides Super Mario Odyssey and Sonic Mania? The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm gonna be honest, holy crap, that thing is... First off, my only complaint with the game is that it's massive. It is too massive. Slow it down. Just shrink the, the world a little bit. And I'm, I'm only playing, though. Um, I do find it to be a bit too overwhelmingly large, but I will say Breath of the Wild has got to be my number three for the um, best games of the year. Maybe even number two. So I do like Mario Odyssey. I do like Sonic. I love Sonic Mania. So if we can count re-release... He's only saying re-releases, so if re-releases count, I would put, like, gold and silver, but I can't do that, so... It's gonna be Breath of the Wild, or Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Nintendo Switch, or Wii U. Pick one. Yellow Bunny asks, In what software did you make that intro of yours? Uh... That's the weirdest thing. Um... I didn't make my intro. I I've said it multiple times. My intro is made by a friend of mine, uh, Redbird36. In fact, the original video was on his channel. Uh, he was practicing with some low-poly 3D and apparently was inspired by my channel to, or the creation of my channel, or just his existence to make one. And then once he did, he uploaded on YouTube and then messaged me a little while later saying, hey, if you want, feel free to use this for an intro. And ever since then, I've been using it for an intro for the majority of my videos. And honestly, I I love it. I know some people have, are a bit mixed on Some are mixed on it, some hate it, some love it. And I'm just gonna say, it's an intro that I like using. And plus it has Startup Speedway Act 1. Beautiful sounding music. Diamond the Meme Master asks, Will you continue using your old channel Game and Tank? Um, as of right now, no. But that's not a guarantee. There's no guarantee that I'm going to just only be exclusive to this channel and not ever focus on that or ever do anything on that channel again. If, there, if at some point in the future I feel that it's necessary to start writing up game reviews again, then I can go ahead and do that and start publishing on that channel. The reason I stopped was because I felt at... Well, mostly the reason is that I basically felt that the short length game reviews just didn't cut it on YouTube anymore. Not really just for the whole, get it past 10 minutes and you can have your mid-roll ad. No, it's not really that. It's just the fact that I feel like people would see the length of the video and be like, well, he's not going to cover that much, even though I try to cram as much information in there, try to make it very information dense as I possibly can without um, overwhelming the viewer. But um, I, that, and also I just wasn't having fun with it anymore. I wasn't having a good time writing reviews and editing and trying to record them. and So I just kind of lost interest in it. It's unfortunate, but you know what? I found something that has kind of um, allowed me to just have so much fun with making content. And yeah, it might be uh, more of a Let's Play kind of thing with the whole mod showcase and the Let's Plays and all the other crazy stuff I do here, but in a way, I feel that I'm I'm probably happier with this kind of content, like making this content now, because I do see the end result, people enjoying it, and I just think it's really cool, so... Um, and every now and then someone tried to correct me, so... <laughs> um, as of right now, no, but that's not a guarantee that I will abandoned that channel. I might return to it one day, but as of right now, Knuckles Channel 3 and Knuckles is my priority when it comes to making content online. Super Spin Bros asks, what's your favorite Knuckles meme? You know, I honestly don't know. Probably, I guess just the end Knuckles stuff. It's just ridiculous. Uh, the Oh No meme is pretty funny. Probably the end Knuckles. <laughs> it just sounds ridiculous, so I, I like it. I think it's fun. So, uh, if there's any Knuckles memes that I'm not aware of, except for that big one that happened last month, let's not get into that. But if there's any other ones that I haven't gotten into, or that I'm not aware of, uh, please feel free to let me know what they look like. And, uh, you might have, you might introduce me to my new favorite Knuckles meme. We'll see. Anyways, thank you for your question. The Farron OS Dev asks, Ever wonder why there is no Tails Mania in Tails? It's eventually gonna happen. Somebody's gonna make it. Somebody will be inspired enough to make it. In fact, I've had people on my Discord server just say, hey, they're going to make it. All the best to them, and I hope they uh, see it through it to the end. And I wish them luck in getting on the level of uh, x Falcon and Modern. Because Modern, uh, good job on your Sonic Mania and Sonic x Falcon. You are a madman with your Knuckles Mania and Knuckles. But I approve. Uh, Sonic TV for fans, what's your favorite Sonic game? Sonic Adventure. And why do I do YouTube? Uh, at first, it was because I was inspired by many by other people to do videos, just like talk about video games and stuff like that. 
Uh, eventually grew into just being more analytical about video games rather than saying, picking up a game and saying, hey, this game is good, you should play it, it's, it's fun, it, it does this, it does it does that, it becomes uh, WCW Sting's theme song before he adopts the crow thing. The whole thing behind that is that there's a lyric that says, he does this, he does that. Obscure reference aside, um, I, as of right now I do it because it's just a way to play video games, act silly, and just, <laughs> and just have a good time. You know, good time making content, and this channel in particular, um, somebody might have already figured out at this point that I don't really have too much Sonic knowledge, and that's probably true. It, it, it actually is. There's a lot of games that I'm not aware of, there's a lot of games I've never played, so it, this is kind of not only being able to try to make entertaining Sonic content, but also trying to discover games that I've never played before, and then... Uh, through live streams and let's plays, you know, showing my first-hand experience on, you know, just me going through this game, so There you go That's why I do YouTube plus it's fun If I haven't said that already and the final question from Sanic Studios my question for the Q&A and Would be do you have any tips for growing a YouTube channel? Uh, I only have eight subscribers, but I do put a decent amount of work into my Sonic videos just stay consistent just upload as frequent as you can. Um, try not to take too many breaks in between, even though, yes, if there, if you do need a break, feel free to take it. Um, at first, just treat it as if, like, YouTube's a grind. That's pretty much the biggest thing I can say. YouTube is a grind. Um, but also, don't just be a solo person who tries to grow on their own. Try to connect with other YouTubers. And I don't mean try to go to Kubanermani and trying to get him to say, hey, let's collab or something, because at 8 subscribers, I'm going to be honest, that's, that's a long shot. That's a shot in the dark. I don't know exactly if you're going to get that. Um, hell, I don't think he even, notices, he even knows of my existence. Which, if he does, hey, that's cool. If he doesn't, again, that's cool. I'll find my own, my own way to grow. Uh, anyways, that's, that's pretty much all I can say. Um, connect with other people who are around your subscriber amount. And, you know, and if you do collaborations, don't collaborate just for the sake of having someone bigger or smaller just to get yourself views and then views and just be selfish about that. Collaborate with people that you actually connect to and you actually want to talk to. Like, I did my collaboration with uh, Gerlis64 and Dave Ace, and those two are some great guys. I, I like talking to them. And they're, the conversation we had as we were recording that, it was just so much fun. We clicked really well, so um, hopefully I can do more collaborations with them. But if you find other people to collaborate with that are just like that, then you know you're good, because then you guys can just collaborate over the dumbest thing and still manage to have a good time. Which is the other thing. Do it because you like it. Don't do it because you want to try and make it big on YouTube, because especially now with the partnership uh, requirements being even more difficult now than they were about a year ago or a few months ago when I first started my channel and was brought into the partnership program or got myself into it. Um, like, just don't think about the partnership program at first. Just think about establishing yourself as as a presence. Establish your presence on YouTube. And um, don't even think about any of the partnership stuff or any advertising or whatever it is. Just focus on growing the channel first. And then, if you feel that that's something you want to do and you want to try to make YouTube a job or something, then whatever you do next is up to you. But right now just focus on having a good time making your content and honestly I wish you and anyone who's asked about uh, content um, wish you all the best of luck so um, there you go so I was actually asked this last question on my discord server so if you haven't checked it out it's in the description down below um, classic Chara asks would you do something more interesting in Sonic Mania other than mods such as making entirely new gameplay with reactions tutorials each area in each zone and some other stuff um, I've had ideas for what kind of videos I would want to make uh, when it comes to Sonic Mania, but I think I want to try these ideas with other Sonic games before I take it to Mania because, well, let's just say I have one that I have thought up, so I'm not opposed to doing something other than mods. I think it would be very interesting and be a breath of fresh air for um, maybe some of you, but also for myself because... You know, I've done nothing but mod content. So uh, we'll see. That will be in the future. So be on the lookout for that. So that's going to do it for the Q&A. I did want to mention the thing about the Nintendo Switch. Again, I have a Nintendo Switch code for a an account that I made specifically for the channel. 
The reason I want to do this is because I want to do a celebration for 10,000 subscribers, and that would be something like a Mario Kart 8 stream or something. That's like the only multiplayer game I have on that. I want to find some way to do a multiplayer stream where I can play games with a lot of you who have supported my channel. So if you have a Nintendo Switch, feel free to add the code in, and then the next time I use my Nintendo Switch, I'll start accepting those. And then we can get together, play some Mario Kart 8, and then I can look into some other multiplayer games that would make it easy for all of us to group together, go into a lobby, and just have a good time. That's the plan for it. I don't have a specific date for it. I don't... Now, I want to try and bring some YouTuber friends in and see exactly who we can get into the stream and just have a good time with it. Anyways, with that said, uh, I want to thank you all so much for your support over the past couple of months for this channel. It's, again, probably one of the craziest ideas I had with sticking with this channel, but hey, weird things happen on the internet, am I right? <laughs> uh, you guys are amazing, so I'm going to not take so much more of your time and I will catch you in the next video, which will probably be a mod showcase, if not then in a Let's Play. Who knows? I don't know exactly what I'm doing next. This is the first thing I'm doing in like a recording session. So anyways, with that said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and safe day, and goodbye.